Welcome back, this is Jeff Byers and this is Annie 255 and we are working on the Rube Goldberg machine. That, now that you watched all the videos for how to use uh, rigid body constraints, now you're ready to uh, start the Rube Goldberg machine. So what, what I've done is I've got, I've, I've created a, a little uh, MB file for you guys to download with screenshots. So please do that now you'll find that under uh, the Rube Goldberg machine contest you'll see that we got a Rube Goldberg machine and we've got to start download all materials here so go ahead and click on that download that unzip the folder what does the folder hold for us well let's take a look so we have the MB file which you're gonna have to go into Maya and create a new project okay so this is what you get you'll have to go into file you're gonna have to go to project window and create a new project I called mine any underscore 255 underscore mod underscore 09 underscore rube underscore Goldberg and then I click accept and then what I want you to do is you will need to place this MB file into the scenes folder of the of the project you just created okay and so when you open that up you will get get back in here you will get this okay it is not complete okay as you can see um, I did that on purpose you have to do the work um, I was going to have you model everything, uh, but that would just take too much time because you have to really concentrate on your own Rube Goldberg mousetrap. So this is just a start to get you going with it. Um, so you you can prepare yourself. So I did most of the modeling. I did all the most of the hard work. You guys just have to put it together. Um, so this is what I want you to have completed and feel free to to use you, your color choices I want it to be contrasting meaning that I don't want the um, the ramps to be the same color as the wall obviously I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to see that okay so you have to have con colors that will contrast each other so you can see that the brown against the blue wall you can see very nicely and you can see the red ball against the the brown that you can see that very nicely separates that really good and so that's those are my that's the reason for my color choices is that you can separate them very easily and see them very clearly okay so these are just images for you to follow you can choose any colors you want as long as, long as they fit the criterion that I just mentioned and you can see I've got different um, screenshots uh, so you can see how you how you can lay this out properly everybody's dynamic simulation is going to be different but we'll get started I'll show you how I did mine and then you just have to tweak yours out to make it work okay that's what it's all about it's it's not easy it's a lot of fun though but it's not easy it's not going to be something you can blow through in an hour you might get lucky might be able to do it I don't know depending on your skill level um, but it might take a couple hours just to get it tweaked out and stuff so don't wait to the last minute and that I'm talking about just the simulation setting up might take you a couple hours to set up I don't know I don't know how, how fast you are you have to duplicate stuff you have to add uh, colors to stuff um, it may take you a couple hours may take you four hours I have no idea how long it's gonna take you guys to do this but I'm thinking um, you can do this in one day okay and the rest of the time you're gonna have to spend working on your mousetrap that'll take longer because you'll have to can, you'll have to start this from a concept so you have to draw out what you want to do what you want to create in following the requirements of the mousetrap assignment you'll have to make sure that um, you get all that stuff all the requirements in that I need um, but have fun with it you know, you, there is an old mousetrap game I used to play all the time, and when I was a kid, that was a long time ago. Um, so you just have to type it in. I think it's still around. Um, I th think you can even still buy it, but you can check it out. 
Um, there are th you keep it simple though. You know that's more complex, but keep it simple. But that's the idea. The whole idea about that assignment, and we'll talk about it later. I'll talk about it when I do the video for that assignment. Um, is that you have to trap a mouse. The end result is to trap a mouse. Okay, using the Rube Goldberg machine system or or technique. All right. So that's it. Once you get everything done, what you were going to want to do is open up your Maya file then at that point, this one, and go to your front view. And we're going to go into and open up that image plane. And yes, I need to take all those images that I just had and put them into the source images folder. So I'll do that really quick. Okay, we're back and now we're going to continue. We're going to go ahead and now I've got the images in my source images folder. I'm going to go ahead and import an image in the background here. So which one do I want? The front view. So go ahead and click on open. And let's go ahead and scale that up. Okay. And I'm just going to place it above what we have for easy reference or to the side. Whatever you guys want to do, let's do it to the side. Maybe that's a little bit better. Or you can have it directly in back of it. It doesn't matter to me. Right now it's in front of it. So what I want to do is go in here and move that back so it is not in the same plane. So now when I move that around, it's in the back. So you can go ahead and scale that as you need to get everything placed right now. You can see that um, if I do place it directly in there, let's put that right in the middle. You could use a uh, wireframe to see through, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to go ahead and scale that just to make it a little easier for you guys. get everything set up right that's fairly about that's pretty close there you go. that way you guys some of you guys like that where it's exact exactly over top and you can just kind of finesse that until you get it the way you want it match it up the best way I can that's pretty close So when I hit the 5 key, I go back to my level here. And I'll just have to take this and put that in a layer. And I'll put that in reference. I'll just reference that so I can easily go back and forth. Hit the 4 key, and that lets you see through. 5 key brings you back to solid modeling, and then 4 is wireframe, and that lets you see through to the other side to where things are. Might help you. I don't know. It's up to you. And then the top view same kind of thing we want here is we want to go to view image plane import image and some of you guys do can set it up yourself as long as it looks like mine and it works I'm, I'm okay with that some of you don't want to mess with all this um, but some of you do I, I get that so that's why I'm showing you how to go ahead and get this set up. So I'm going to get that locked in here as close as I can. Let's move that around. It's not perfect here. Might be too big. We'll get it close. Okay, and then I'll move it over. There we go. So you can kind of see a top view of how I set up the blocks here, which is pretty clear. Let's match that up a little bit better. There we go. That's pretty. That's really, really close. Okay. So the 5 key again will show you what you have to start with, and then hit the 4 key, and that lets you see through it, so you can get those matched up pretty closely to what I have. Okay. All right. 5 key goes back to what you have and the 4 key lets you see through to the template underneath. Okay, great.
Okay, so that is what you're going to be doing. Now I'm going to move that down so it's not fighting against anything. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and and make that make sure that background image is selected and right click over and go to add selected objects. So now I can turn those both off and on if I need to. They're a nice reference to have. And if you need to, if you have a dual screen, you can put the other images that I have um, to look at up to you. Um, anyway, so what you'll do is you'll put everything together, okay? So when you're duplicating these blocks, basically all it all all that you have left to do is duplicate and move things around. So just to give you an example here. So all you have to do is do a control D. It's all modeled for you and to kind of show you if you want to do this on your own is I took a cube, elongated it, um, added edge loops and then extruded up. That's how I got that edge on there. there. So if you, when you get into your uh, mouse trap, I know some of you are very good at modeling. You know exactly what I did. So, I'm, but I'm just some of you may have questions about it. And with this, I did the same exact extrude method. With this one, I used a helix um, where you can find it here. You can go to create polygon primitives, and I did a helix. And what I did was I get it, got it exactly the way I wanted. Um, you can go through here and type it in, or you can. I'll go ahead and show you real quick. Helixes are kind of a different animal here. Let's move it back, and I'll do an F key so I can just focus on it. So if you click on this right here, you can see the polyhelix here, and you can see the number of coils. What I'm doing is I'm clicking and highlighting, and I'm moving my, I'm holding my middle mouse button down, and I can do this just interactively which is kind of fun and then I can go to height and just kind of interactively change that I can change the width I can change the radius so that's what I did to create that spiral okay it just takes time and then I think what I did was I ended up adding more subdivisions this way because it was a little too like I did like 12 I think like yeah makes it a little more smoother um, believe it or not, in Dynamics, if you want a ball rolling down, it may get stuck because you don't have enough subdivisions here. Okay, and if that happens to you, you'll just have to go up in subdivisions to make it a lot smoother for the ball to be able to to get through. Okay, you have to make sure the opening's big enough, at least twice as, twice the size. Okay, what I ended up doing then at that point was I just took the faces off the front, of course and the bottom okay and this is of course if you want to create your own this is that's fine um, but I, a word of warning though if um, you don't want to leave it one-sided we talked about that um, dynamics loves to have two-sided objects so what I did was again clicked on this selected it and did an extrude okay now it really depends. I'm going to go back in here. You can see I'm down at the bottom where we have the manipulator, and I'm going to move it in. Okay, if you move it in, that causes it to all turn black. So you want to move it out. And that's going to give you thickness. Okay, so that's how I created that. And we have a surface that will, will the dynamic rigid bodies will bounce around in there and roll. So the the ball should roll s through there nice and smoothly. Okay, so that's how I created the helix, if you're wondering. All right, so the next thing you're going to want to do is once you duplicate the pieces that you need, I, I did all the work, the, you know, the heavy lifting here with the, the regular modeling, just to save you time. And But you have to set it up yourself. I just felt that if I just gave it to you with everything set up, there's not much there except for the simulation, um, and you can do that fairly quickly. Um, so setting things up is basically you just duplicate what you need so we'll start from the top here make sure in object mode and I've got the 4 key on and I can go control D and hit the W key and just move that down and just get that positioned and so I've got a template right behind it and so I just position that where I need it like that You've got the walls all set up, so that's good. Okay. Now, if you see something that is too long, right? 
what I did was this is an easy fix you just right click over and go to vertex mode and just move it in go back into selection mode and you're done pretty simple all right from the top view I'm gonna hit the four key so we've got one block here so I'm gonna select it go to the top view and what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go control D and move that into place that's all you have to do okay do it all the way around they're all the same exact um, uh, cube okay now the only thing is is that when you get to the point where let's say from the front view they get a little bit bigger right okay so what you'll have to do is when you get to that point and I'm not sure which one it is it's probably one of these where it gets starts getting bigger you guys can see and each one gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger so what you do is with this when you get to that point let's say this it starts over here so I think it is this one so we got one two three four five I believe yep five one two three four five so it's six one's hidden that, are, that start getting bigger so maybe it starts back here okay what you do is when you get to that one what you'll do is you'll go in there from this point or from the side view is you'll right click over and go to vertex mode and that doesn't you sometimes doesn't work so you just have to right click over somewhere here and then you got you get that and then you can start going in here and from the front view go ahead and match that so one two three four five six seven okay that's it that's what I did that way you're not messing the reason why I don't use scales because I've already got it set up above the ground plane okay and that is essential when you're doing rigid bodies you cannot have it touching the ground plane so if I go to the side view here that's the front side view here it's not touching the ground plane you see you can see okay you cannot be touching you can get it really close you just can't be touching okay right so that's the blocks okay what else now all right so I should bring a perspective in here probably to be able to to see more what's going on so let me do from the side view I'll bring a perspective in so we can see what else we need to do here so view bookmarks no image plane perspective there we go here's our perspective All right this kind of tells us what what we're doing here I'll move that out of the way alright so my perspective maybe that doesn't work really well I could probably put an, uh, bring another perspective in here um, image plane but if I go in here and bring a perspective in here I think it kind of takes over everything in this let's see if it will work for us yeah, it just it just takes over, and I don't even and it's in the way. So yeah, Control Z back. Don't like that. Doesn't really work. Oh, maybe I do have it in here. Is that it? That's it. It's in there. And let's scale that up so we can see it a little bit better. And I can rotate it. And just kind of move it around where I need it. So there it is. There's my perspective. So you guys can see what's next on here. Okay, so let me rotate again. All right. So basically, what I've got going on here. Again, I want to put that in there into this layer, so I'm not. I don't keep selecting it, so I can just see it. Okay, so we get all those done, and you can see that the last one is really close to this one right here because it's gonna it's gonna do a domino effect and hit that ball. So I need to have the ball in the locking uh, areas set up, but we just need to put another one of these guys. So what I do is I select it, and you can see that I need to have that place there. So you can see. I can duplicate that. Control D. So that's the next piece I do. And it's just this ramp again. 
and I match it up to the beginning of where this is going to be right here and I rotate it basically kind of what we have here get zoomed in here as close as I can move that around a little bit to kind of follow that and I am off still a little bit just a touch there we go. Get as close as we can. You know, it's not going to be perfect. And then, you know, of course, I just go out, right click over it, go to vertex, and select the vert vertices and move them in. And then move them up. And that's how I created that part. Okay. Alright. Cool. And then this one here, I'm a little off here with these, but that's okay. I can just kind of move these around a little bit. It's it's okay if they're a little off. And then duplicate these down. Control D that, you know, all these down. This one here is already done with the, with uh that's already completely finished. And the funnel's completely finished for you. This one's completely finished. That's more difficult. Not that you guys can't model your own stuff, which is I that's fine. Do what you want. Um as long as it's close to what I have here and then the funnels are done for you so basically the ball hits this goes all the way down let's talk about it here goes all the way down goes into that which pushes down on this thing right here and it flips that ball up into the funnel and it kind of staircase down kind of staircase down all the way to the bottom okay so with this one you'll have to duplicate this control D move it forward and take the vertices right here and just move them down like that so you get a stair so ball hits that staircase 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 all the way into that don't it and we've got lots I've got lots of um, screenshots of uh, perspective shots of how that would look okay you can look at that look at those and that's it when you're all completed what you'll have to do next once that's done we save this real quick start zero zero one set up here we go Right, then you'll have to add all colors. So let me open up a scene where I've got all the colors added. There we go. And so this is the completed piece. All right, so you can see that we've got the stair step effect. Okay, and that's kind of what it looks like if you're just curious. Okay. And everything colored. Again, this is just an example of the colors that I used, and everything is contrasting against the floor and the wall. Okay, that's what I want. I made these clear because it's a lot more fun because you can see the ball going through. So these are Lambert materials. Okay, so when you start, you can right click over something, and you can see that I've got a Lambert on all of these. So here's the texture ramp texture and I named everything I would recommend you doing the same thing with that I did a transparency about halfway color halfway transparency and same and these two are the exact same There's, they share the same Lambert I use Lambert's because I don't have any issues with shininess okay when I do a play blast animation we want to keep this as simple as possible so these are all Lambert's okay so these are the colors I use. You're welcome to use them or use your own colors as long as they contrast each other and they contrast the background. Okay? So you're not forced, I'm not forcing you to, but the color combinations I have work really well because the red balls are very easy to see at all times. Okay? If you use yellow balls, that's fine. But um, make sure you contrast the objects that they're on and going against. Okay, these balls are all contrasting. They e they're easy to see no matter where they're at in the scene. And that's what you need to do. Okay, that's set up. So
um, have fun. I gave you plenty of screenshots to get this set up right. I did most of the work. All you have to do is duplicate and set things up yourself. I would highly recommend that you name everything and name all the, the uh, materials. Um, it doesn't take that much longer and it's easy to grab things, you know. So I've got all my stuff um, named properly. And I give you a good start because I, you know, give you the tiny ball zero one, and if you duplicate that, it should give you the next version of it, right? So, like I said, I did most of the work. You just need to set it up. Um, the dominoes were will be the most tedious, you know, to do, but get it all set up. So basically, the balls run down here. There's enough weight. They fall down, go down. This is kind of fun and hits these, knocking these over which knocks into this ball which n starts it cuz it's got a little ridge here to and it's it's I've angled that okay so the ball will rest here and rest into that position hopefully now if you see the ball rolling off of here then you'll just have to rotate that slightly just to keep it in place so it does not move around okay so that's those are things you'll have to do. You have to problem solve this out. So if you have things rolling off, not staying put, like I've already got this cupped in here, um, that should be good to go. Okay. So good luck with that. I mean, we're uh, all. I'll show you how I got it all working. Um, and every it's going to be different for everybody though. When I show you the settings I have, it may not work for you. So. You're gonna have to problem solve this stuff out. That's what that's what it's all about with Rube Goldberg. Even if you're creating something from scratch, in uh, the physical form, um, so it's pretty fun though. It's pretty exciting, and it's not hard work. It's just a lot of tweaking. Okay, just stick with it, and you'll get it done, and everything will look good. And then you'll start working on your mousetrap. So I'm thinking this is probably one day of work. Okay, to get it just right, get the animation, and play blast to me. Make sure you save your scene a lot. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.